They went to Kurdish place. They don't even celebrate Christmas. Few actors show the sort of acting range that makes each of their roles unrecognizable from the next. In so many cases, even with some of the greatest actors, you can see one part bleed over into the next in all of their work. Viggo Mortensen, however, is not one of those typecast performers. His roles are so varied that it's virtually always a refreshing surprise with something new from the New York native. In today's list, we're going through our top 10 Viggo Mortensen movies of all time. Would have been the knowledge that her rotting flesh was to be trapped for all eternity inside a big box. Number 10, Hidalgo. Renowned horseman, Frank Hopkins, played by Vigo, is known for his expert performances in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. His interest, piqued by the tales of the rugged cowboy's talent, Sheikh Riyadh, invites Hopkins to prove his bravery and skill in a treacherous long-distance horse race known as the Ocean of Fire. Unable to shy away from the challenge, Frank obliges, determined to win the Middle Eastern race with his trusty American Mustang, Hidalgo, against the fiercest riders in the world. Get out of here, mister. Leave me be. This is not possible! Based on the American legend of Frank Hopkins and his Mustang, the titular Hidalgo, the film is a recounting of Hopkins' legendary 1891 distance race in Arabia against the pure-blooded Arabian horses of the Bedouin tribes. Hidalgo grossed a disappointing $108 million against its $100 million budget. The film received mixed critical reception and audience reviews, although Roger Ebert thoroughly enjoyed it. I would know you only as a white man. I mean, I got good at hiding my face, too. Number 9, Appaloosa. Viggo Mortensen is Everett Hitch, traveling the lawless towns of the 1880s Southwest with his friend, Virgil Cole. Together, the two partners bring justice anywhere that will hire them. However, their longtime bond is threatened when they take on a job in the mining town of Appaloosa to save its inhabitants from the cruel Randall Bragg and his band of cronies with a penchant for running roughshod all over them. Boss has a gun for you. I'm going outside. You don't come out, I'll come back in and kill you. While attempting to take down Bragg, they meet an alluring widow, played by Renee Zellweger, who puts a significant strain on their friendship. Although it initially was met with relatively lukewarm reviews at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2008, reception for the movie grew. It currently sits at a respectable 76% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, with most critics praising the story for the strong chemistry between the cast and clever psychology in the overall narrative to add depth to a traditional Western. The film's budget was a low $20 million, but only grossed just under $28 million worldwide. So where's your partner? He refuses to come in here. That's fine, perfectly fine. Number 8, Far From Men. Viggo Mortensen plays Daru, a quiet, reclusive, and self-obsessed schoolteacher in 1950s Algeria. Daru is tasked with delivering an admitted murderer named Mohammed to a French court to be put on trial. As the two men travel together, they learn to trust one another, and Mohammed opens up about the truth behind his committed murder. While he did, in fact, kill another man, it was a situation of either him or the lives of his family, making killing the other man an easy choice given the alternative. Vous avez tué des hommes qui se rendaient. C'est un crime de guerre. Based on the short story The Guest from Albert Camus's Exile and the Kingdom Collection, Far From Men told a multifaceted story with moral and narrative death that hit well with critics, including Roger Ebert, who praised it for its imaginative storytelling. Rotten Tomatoes critics gave it a glowing 84%, while the audience score sits at a respectable 73%. Despite the film's critically solid reception from both professionals and audiences, its $835,000 box office performance fell flat against its budget of $5.4 million. Si tu pars vers le désert, je te dirai à ton village, je te livrerai en militaire. Number 7, The Road. In a post-apocalyptic world, America is a shadow and a husk of what it once was. Now a dark and brutal place, one man, played by Viggo Mortensen, and his young son must wander through the wastes as they make their way towards the sea with the dream of keeping civilization alive. You don't have anything to eat? Come on, let's go. I ain't going nowhere. But the harsh landscape is far from their only danger, and they have to avoid gangs of other surviving humans who have been reduced to savagery and will enslave them, or worse. Based on Cormac McCarthy's 2006 novel of the same name, 
The Road had a limited North American cinematic release in November of 2009. Its critical reception was generally positive, with a 74% tomato meter score and 15 award nominations. Its box office performance, however, was less than stellar, grossing only $27.6 million off of its $25 million budget. It's a little boy, Papa! What little boy? What, I saw a little boy. what the hell are you doing? I saw a little boy! Number 6 A History of Violence. Viggo Mortensen plays Tom Stahl, a man who heroically dispatches two petty thieves who are attempting to hold up his small town diner. In the wake of his heroics, an imposing and threatening stranger, played by Ed Harris, comes to his town. Coming to the house. Who's coming to the house? Just grab it. Do it and be okay, ready. Okay, stop. Are you serious? I'll be there as soon as I can. Harris's character, Carl Fogarty, believes the small town family man to be his long lost Philadelphia mob hitman, Joey Cusack. Learning of the truth behind his past self, Having been buried deep within the recesses of his psyche, Tom must confront his violent history and reconcile with it as he protects his present. A History of Violence is the screen adaptation of the 1997 graphic novel of the same name, written by John Wagner and illustrated by Vince Locke. The film received widespread acclaim from critics, with a tomato meter sitting at 87% fresh, and audiences as well. Viggo Mortensen himself praised the film as one of, if not the best, movies he's ever been a part of. A History of Violence doubled its $32 million budget, grossing $60.3 million worldwide. It's a terrible thing. I think we'll all be better off when we get past it. Yeah, but you really went beyond what the average I, person... I mean Number 5. Eastern Promises After meeting Russian-British midwife Anna, played by Naomi Watts, Viggo Mortensen's ruthless and mysterious Nikolai must leverage his ties to one of London's most dangerous crime families. Anna is in possession of potentially damning evidence against the London-based Russian Mafia family's sex trafficking ring. Anger is very dangerous. Makes people do stupid things. Events of death and deceit are put into motion, with Nikolai out for retribution. The gangster film premiered at the 2007 Toronto International Film Festival, winning the audience prize for Best Film. Eastern Promises grossed a worldwide total of just over $56 million on a budget of $50 million. However, its marginal profit told a starkly different tale to the overwhelmingly positive critic and audience reviews. Rotten Tomatoes has the film at an 89% tomato meter score and an 83% audience score. If they terminate the operation now, they will be wasting this. Number 4. Captain Fantastic After the sudden death of his wife, Leslie, Ben Cash, played by Viggo Mortensen, must take his six children into the outside world for the first time. Cash and his wife had raised their kids deep in the wilds of Washington State, isolated from other people and all forms of technology, choosing to instead raise them with a focus on physical fitness and strength of mind. The family must now reintegrate with larger society after over a decade of isolation from it in all forms. I'm okay. He's okay now. Sir? Sorry. Sir? Captain Fantastic grossed a strong $21.3 million worldwide on a modest budget of $5 million. It was met with a solid critical reception and nominated for over 25 awards, of which it won nine, including Best Actor for Mortensen. Both critics and audiences gave the film markedly positive reviews, with 82% and 85% fresh scores, respectively. But we want to live with you. I almost got you killed, sweetie. It was an accident! Number 3. Green Book Viggo Mortensen plays rough and tough Italian-American bouncer from the Bronx, Tony Lip. Lip is tapped by African-American pianist Dr. Don Shirley as both driver and muscle as he embarks on a concert tour in the 1962 Deep South. It's not great at all. It's humiliating. What are you talking about? We were screwed. Now we ain't. Amidst confronting the dangers stemming from the racism and segregation of the era, the two men develop a strong friendship while helping each other through their own personal and familial situations. Green Book earned a stellar $321.8 million worldwide on its production budget of only $23 million and held a strongly positive critical reception. Rotten Tomatoes has the film at a 72% on their tomato meter and a 91% audience score. The film was met with controversy after release, with the surviving members of Shirley's family being critical about depicting his and Tony's relationship and them not having been contacted at all during production. Wait, wait. Come, come up me and my family. Number 2. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers 
Part 2 of Peter Jackson's screen adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's epic fantasy, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, sees Viggo Mortensen reprise his role as the Ranger Aragorn. He teams up with Legolas and Gimli, traveling to the human kingdom of Rohan as they search for the kidnapped hobbits, Merry and Pippin. While tracking the captured hobbits, the trio encounters the thought-dead wizard, Gandalf, now Gandalf the White, who aids them in freeing Rohan's king, Theoden, from Saruman's spell. Do not let him speak. He will put a spell on us. The Two Towers continued the film's trilogy trend of overwhelming box office success and immense critical reception. Blowing out its $94 million budget, the movie held a worldwide gross of $951.2 million. Rotten Tomatoes has the film at a beaming 95% on their tomato meter and a 95% audience score and was nominated for six Academy Awards and won both Best Visual Effects and Best Sound Editing. But he must be mistaken. King Theoden has a good memory. He was only a small child at the time. Our number one pick is The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. In the conclusion to Peter Jackson's epic film trilogy, Viggo Mortensen returns as Aragorn. He must reconcile with being the heir to the throne of Gondor and take his rightful place as the king on the throne of men. Aragorn confronts and enlists the aid of an undead army to take back Minas Tirith, which has come under siege from the forces of Mordor. But after the siege, he must create a diversion that will allow the Ringbearer, Frodo, and his companion Sam to sneak into Mordor and destroy the One Ring once and for all. I summon you to fulfill your oath. None but the King of Gondor may command me. The culmination of over a decade of work, The Return of the King concludes what many still hold to be the most remarkable film trilogy of all time. Considered to be a timeless work, the movie was a landmark in filmmaking, with a box office of $1.142 billion worldwide to blow away its budget of $94 million. It holds highly positive ratings on both critic and audience reviews, with a 93% tomato meter score, and was nominated for 11 Academy Awards, and holds the record for the highest clean sweep at the Oscars for having won all categories it was nominated for. Long have you hunted me. Long have I endured it. Do you agree with our list? Be sure to comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be the first to receive new top 10 videos from Stream TV.